Last week, there was controversy in the Greek parliament after members of the opposition party, the uh, Syriza, they are a progressive left-wing party in Greece, stormed out after watching Zelensky appear on the screen to parliament aside two neo-Nazi Azov battalion members. Uh, the leader of the opposition party, uh, his name is Alexis Cyprus. He actually tweeted out, uh, this is in Greek, but we are translating as best as possible. It says the speech of members of the neo-Nazi order Azov in the Greek parliament is a challenge. The absolute responsibility lies with the university. Ta I, I'm sure that was translated probably poorly, but he says he talks. He talked about a historic day, but it's a historical shame. Solidarity with Ukrainian people is a given, but the Nazis cannot have a say in parliament. Um, the government spokesperson also came out after this and uh, said that uh, that including a message from an Azov battalion member was wrong and inappropriate. So this is really interesting what has happened. You know, in Greece, they're very pro, you know, they're sympathetic to Ukraine. This particular political party, this progressive political party is very sympathetic to Ukraine, but they are not at all sympathetic to the Azov battalion and the neo-Nazis that have been absorbed into the Ukrainian military. Here in the United States, we don't talk about it much in the mainstream media. They seem to have whitewashed this history. The Greeks have not. Uh, they're much more aware of it. There's actually a large Greek population living in Mariupol in Ukraine, which is where this battalion is very heavily centered and has been fighting. And there's been a big civil war in the Donbass region of Ukraine for a long time. Um, and so, you know, Robbie, what do you, this is really interesting that right. the Greeks said, whoa, what is this? Uh, well, not okay, Zelensky. And apparently one of these uh, two uh, Azov battalion members who appeared in the video, one of them was uh, was trying to appeal to the Greek people as a Greek and, and said, according to Reuters, said, I address you as a Greek by origin. And then he actually, so he had, he said he was in the Azov battalion, but he, he sort of denied being a Nazi because he, he said that, he actually said that his grandfather had fought against the Nazis or, or something like that. So, uh, you know, trying to, I, I guess, trying to disguise what uh, the ideology of the Azov Battalion actually is. Well, and people are very confused about the ideology and they say, how can right. Zelensky, who's Jewish, be, you know, really, you know, how can these guys be neo-Nazis when Zelensky himself is Jewish and, you know, this doesn't make any sense. But people need to understand that being a Nazi, the, the term stems from nationalism. It's being a nationalist. It's not right. being against specifically Jews. In fact, even Nazis, German Nazis were not just against Jews. They were against all kinds of groups of people. Um, and what, what we're seeing in Ukraine with the Azov Battalion and several others, they're not the only one, they're the largest, they're the ones that people get you know, a lot of visibility, but they're anti anything other than Ukrainian. So they are Ukra ultra right wing Ukrainian nationalists. They don't want anyone else in Ukraine except Ukrainians. You know, they persecute Russian Ukrainians, they persecute Romanians, they go after polls. Right. They go after anybody who's not Ukrainian, very specifically. Now, they've been targeting mostly Russian Ukrainians because there's a lot, a very large in the eastern part of Ukraine. Um, a lot of those Ukrainians are Russian speaking. They, they don't speak Ukrainian. Uh, and so there's been a big, you know, push from the, the this this ideology, this neo-Nazi nationalistic ideology to eradicate the Russian culture, Russian language from Ukraine. They want Ukraine to be Ukrainian and that's it. So it, they're not, you know, the, so that's where people get confused. They say, well, no, that they, how could they, you know, because they're not anti-Jew. Well, no, that's not, the, that's not, they're anti-Russian actually more than it, but also anti-Romanian, anti-Pole, but they target the Russians specifically more often than anyone else. Uh, you said um, that you said Nazi doesn't just mean nationalist, right? Not, I mean, Nazi is actually nationalist socialist. It includes the, the socialist, right? There's a lot of some people on the left, you know, conveniently leave out the socialist right. aspect of the Nazi regime, which was very collectivist and, and massive government, you know, over, oversight of how the economy will be run, allowing private enterprise to run it, but very much for state, uh, explicitly for state uh, purposes, right? Uh, you know, under well, the and I don't know. I don't know the politics of the Azov Battalion or the neo-Nazi groups, factions right. within Ukraine. I don't know what their economic politics are, 
But what we do know is that they are very much uh, ethnically nationalistic. You know, they they want to eradicate the right. Russian language completely from Ukraine. They banned it in certain areas of Ukraine. Um, so they're they very much target and they've terrorized the Russian Ukrainian people for the last you know really long time. And now they've been in a civil war in Ukraine in the Donbass region for the last eight years, eight nine years. Um, but you know, look here in the United States, we don't talk about it. if you if you talk about it, people here now. I mean, they they were talking about it actually quite a lot. It was well known. There's several you could go back in time if you do the Google history search and and do it ba before the war in Ukraine, the Russian Ukrainian war, and you'll see all kinds of articles popping up in Guardian and New York Times talking about the neo Nazi problem in Ukraine. But suddenly now, there's what problem? What neo-Nazis? Which is amazing because talking about the rise of Nazis is the mainstream media's favorite activity. But you can't uh, ascribe to this group any uh, like Republican or conservative views, right? right. So there's no they. There's no way to fit it into our current lens. In fact, it fits the opposite way because they're fighting on the same side as a, a as a, a group of people that, you know, stateside uh, Democrats and liberals are, are very sympathetic to, understandably sympathetic to the plight of Ukraine. But it doesn't, you know, fit our current political moment the way and, that that right. that the mainstream does for talking about Nazis. And the fact that this story didn't get out and wasn't uh, mm. mainstream news here in the United States that you know Greek. Parliament stood up and walked out and said, whoa, and the government right. had to issue, uh, well, you know, not the whole apologies. Parliament. They didn't, mo mostly the people was, in the parliament were applauding, right? They got a, he got a standing ovation. From so the, yeah, I don't know, right do you, now, what do you know about how this might change? Is, is this going to affect how the Greek government views the war? No, I think that they're still very pro-Ukraine. I think they're very, mm -hmm. very sympathetic to Ukraine. Uh, I think they just are not at all sympathetic to the Nazi battalions that have been absorbed into the official Ukrainian military. I think that is that is actually, if you go back and look at the history of, of I mean, the Greeks have been talking about this for a long time. They've actually condemned Ukraine for absorbing them into their military well before the war happened. They've been talking against the Azov battalion and raising this issue with Ukraine for a while. Um, but now with this, Yes, they are still very much pro Zelensky. They are they are sympathetic to Ukraine. They just did not like seeing these neo Nazis on their screen addressing Parliament. They thought that was way too mm -hmm. far. And you know, like the the opposition right now, they 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 have the the main party in power is on the right. The left wing party is the one that stormed out. Uh, and then the government, the right wing government had to issue the apology saying that was totally inappropriate. This has been in the news in Greece, not making it in the news here. The Greek people are very upset about this saying what in the world? You know, we want to be sympathetic, but my gosh, you know, like this is not the way to do it. Yeah. So very interesting stuff going on. But, you know, it is something that needs to be recognized. We're not recognizing at all here in the United States the problem. The, the, the you know, we were for a while there, like I said, in mainstream news, but now it's Oh, uh, what problem? You know, what neo-Nazi problem in Ukraine? There is one, and you can still be, you know, if you support Ukraine, you can be pro-Zelensky, but you can also understand that there is this this faction that is, you know, quite powerful in Ukraine, um, and they they should be called out. But right, we we do have a very underdog mentality in this country. You just see the underdog, you just want to believe they're good, wholly good, and that there's nothing bad about them. And the reality is, is there is this faction that's actually quite bad. Mm. But, you know, right now everybody's like, no, go get them. And they're very good fighters. So they're actually the ones that have been doing the majority of the really good fighting. Uh, and that is also why Zelensky was appearing alongside both of them. They are very ruthless. They're the ones that we've seen a lot of the torture of Russian soldiers. That's all being committed by this particular faction. They're very, but they are, you know, very good, efficient fighters. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's the it very War makes uh, strange. I mean, I'm not. It's it's very bad, obviously. I mean, we uh, the U.S. was allied. With, you know, an anti-communist country. We're allied with the Soviet Union during World War II because Hitler was right. more of our enemy. And it, you know, there's all these weird examples of. How how that all shakes down, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, thanks for you know drawing more attention to it. It is it is something that was being talked about before the war, and now because of who who's on what side in terms of like the media conversation, uh, it, it's yeah, not talked about. So right. Well, we'll have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.